This video is a recap of how to calculate the perimeter and area of two-dimensional shapes and how to calculate the volume of simple three-dimensional shapes. First of all, we have to remember that one-dimensional is an object that just has a length. It has no width, it has no depth. A one-dimensional shape is a line. It has a linear measurement. That means that the units we measure it in are centimetres or inches or feet or kilometres or the like. A two-dimensional shape has a length and a width. It exists in a plane. It has an area which is measured in centimetres squared or square centimetres, inches squared or square inches, feet squared or square feet, kilometres squared, or square kilometres, etc. A three-dimensional object has length, width, and height. This means it has a volume. The volume is the space it takes up. Its volume is measured in cubic units, cubic centimetres, cubic inches, cubic feet, cubic kilometres, or the like. Here is a rectangle. Because it's a rectangle, there are some things we know about it. The first thing we know about it is that opposite sides are the same length. The second thing we know about it is that all the interior angles are right angles. That means they are 90 degrees. Let's give our rectangle some dimensions. Let's say it's 7 by 3. It could be 7 anything, but let's say it's 7 centimetres. 7 centimetres by 3 centimetres. And if one side is 7 centimetres long, it means the opposite side is also 7 centimetres long. If one side is 3 centimetres long, it means the opposite side is also 3 centimetres long. To find the perimeter, Let's assume that we're starting at one corner, which I've marked with a yellow cross. We proceed along one side. When we get to the other corner, we've measured a distance of seven centimetres. From there, we proceed along the next side. When we've reached the following corner, we've covered another three centimetres. So we've covered ten centimetres altogether. Now we proceed along the third side. When we reach the next corner, we've covered another 7 centimetres. So we've covered 17 centimetres altogether. We proceed along the final side until we get back to where we started from. That's another 3 centimetres. So altogether, we've covered 20 centimetres. The perimeter of this rectangle is 20 centimetres. 7 plus 3 plus 7 plus 3. If we go back to our rectangle again, any rectangle, all rectangles have a length and a width. We can say L and W. And so we have a generic definition of the perimeter of a rectangle. We can say the perimeter is L plus W plus L plus W. We can rewrite this as 2L plus 2W or 2 into L plus W, meaning 2 times L plus W. Now let's take a look at area. Here's a rectangle, same rectangle. It's 7 centimetres long, it's 3 centimetres wide. To calculate the area, we're now thinking in two dimensions. We're going to look at the surface area that this rectangle occupies. That's what the area is. In this picture, it's the part shaded in in grey. That is the area of this rectangle. Now, let's imagine that this rectangle is divided up into squares. Each one of these squares is one centimetre wide and one centimetre long. All four sides are one centimetre. We call this square 
one square unit. In this case, because we're talking of centimeters, that one square is called a square centimeter. That is a measurement of area. One square centimeter. If we now count how many of these squares there are in that first row, there are seven. Seven square centimeters. If we look at the second row, there are another seven square centimeters. And the final row, there are another seven square centimeters. So in total, we have seven times three, 21 square centimeters. That is the area of that rectangle, 21 square centimeters. If we look at a rectangle which has the length L and the width W, meaning it could be any length, it could be any width, we just call the length L to represent any length and the width W to represent any width, we can say that the area of the rectangle is length times width. And the units would be square units. So if the length was in centimetres and the width was in centimetres, the area would be in square centimetres. If the length was in inches and the width was in inches, the area would be square inches. Now let's take a look at volume. This is a cuboid. It is the three-dimensional equivalent of a rectangle. It isn't a cube because a cube would have all sides the same length. This clearly has three sides of different lengths. It is a cuboid. For this example, let's say our cuboid is five inches long, three inches wide, and two inches deep. We can split it into smaller cubes. These cubes are one unit in length, one unit in width, and one unit in depth. So in this case, one inch deep, one inch wide, one inch long. Each one is a cubic inch. So in green there, we have one cubic inch. In the face that we can see, there are 15 such cubes. You can count them. So that front face is 15 cubic inches. But we can clearly see there are two such faces. The back is the same as the front. So there's another 15. So in total, we have 30 cubic inches. This can be calculated by merely saying three lots of five multiplied by two. Three times five times two is 30 cubic inches. If we just count the cubes, there are 30 of them, but we don't need to count the cubes. We can just multiply the length of the three sides, five, by three, by two, and we get 30 cubic inches. If we go back to our original cuboid, as we said, it has a length, it has a width or breadth, it has a height or depth. We can represent these by just L, W, and H. So we can say that for any cuboid, its volume is given by the length multiplied by the width, multiplied by the height, and the units are cubic units. So if the dimensions are in centimetres, the volume is in cubic centimetres. If the dimensions are in inches, the volume is in cubic inches. If the dimensions are in metres, the volume is in cubic metres. Thank you for watching.